SpaceX has revealed its plans for a new artificial gravity starship that will break the laws of physics and usher in a new era of space exploration. The new craft is expected to be powerful enough to take humans beyond the solar system and explore the rest of the Milky Way. In today's video, let's look at this amazing new starship and how it will break the laws of physics. Will this new craft be able to help humanity colonize the galaxy, or must we wait for more breakthroughs before we can leave the solar system? For centuries, ever since we realized that every star we can see in the night sky is a sun, just like our own, with its own solar system, planets, and possibly even life, humanity has dreamed of crossing the astronomical distances separating us from the ultimate alien destinations. Even the nearest star is more than four light years away, while the fastest speed a human-created spacecraft has ever traveled at, reached by NASA's Juno mission, is a mere 46 miles per second. Even at that speed, it would take more than 4,000 years to reach the nearest star. There are two limiting factors, the current limits of our technology and the laws of physics. Advances in fields like laser sails, nuclear propulsion, or producing and controlling either antimatter or dark matter could provide a game-changing technological breakthrough but appear to lie far off into the distant future. But physics-defying technologies, despite being often touted as the future, are fundamentally flawed. This may all change with a recent announcement by SpaceX that the company may have found a new method of rocket propulsion. SpaceX says it has created a thruster system that defies physics and has successfully tested it. The rocket propulsion system uses electrically charged gas and can achieve speeds up to 65 kilometers per second, or about 135,000 miles per hour. The engine is made from super lightweight carbon fiber fuel tanks with cold gas thrusters. It doesn't use any type of propellant, meaning it does not expel any byproducts into space. Instead, the engine produces thrust by accelerating superheated plasma with magnetic fields, which also means no fumes are being expelled from combustion. These types of engines are known as electric thrusters, but they work very differently from those used in SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets. These thrusters create thrust by propelling pressurized gas, whereas electric ones produce a charged plasma that emits ions to push a craft forward. The electric engine developed by SpaceX is reportedly more powerful than conventional gridded ion thrusters and could power manned missions to Mars and beyond. It could also cut down on travel time for spacebound cargo because it requires less propellant, which can be expensive to launch into orbit. The technology is still being tested and further development is needed before it will be ready for space flight. It has been submitted for peer review, and NASA experts think it has potential, at least on paper. Some say it's impossible to travel at high speeds through space, but that hasn't stopped Elon Musk from claiming he can do it. His idea is to create a light speed engine that will take us to Mars in just 70 days. Such an engine defies physics and would mean traveling faster than 186,000 miles per second. There are a few ways that we could travel at light speed, but first, we need to understand how light works. As it travels through space, every atom in its path interacts with it. This slows it down and even stops it completely if there's no matter around to pass through. Because of these interactions, light has a maximum velocity of 186,000 miles per second, meaning that's as fast as it can go through space. Since nothing can travel faster than light without breaking the rules of physics, if we want to catch up with a distant star in our lifetime, we have to find another way to get there besides traveling directly toward it. SpaceX also admitted that they have come up with a plan to produce artificial gravity on the Starship. The new concept is called the Gravity Link Starship. The idea was inspired in part by science fiction. Depending on how realistic a franchise is trying to be, starships will either generate their own gravity using some special device or through rotating sections. While the former concept is much like the hyperdrive, the latter is entirely feasible. The concept goes back over a century, with the first recorded example provided by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and aeronautics. In 1903, he published a study titled Investigation of Outer Space Rocket Devices, where he suggested using rotational force to create artificial gravity in space. Since then, many variations of this idea have been proposed for space stations and habitats, such as the Von Braun Wheel, the O'Neill Cylinder, and the Stanford Taurus. 
Some concepts are even being considered for development, such as NASA's Nautilus X space station or the Gateway Foundation's proposal for a commercial space station. After conducting some research into centripetal force, scientists arrived at the idea for the GLS. The GLS is a hub ship where the payload bay is filled with a truss that unfolds and deploys robotically, thus serving as the wheel spokes. It would be positioned between two passenger starships and would link up with them during the six-plus-month-long journey to Mars. Once linked up, the passenger ships would swivel around to reorient themselves and fire their thrusters to impart momentum to the wheel. Once enough velocity was generated to simulate Earth normal gravity, the passenger ships would reorient themselves again to face inward towards the hub ship. For the remainder of the journey, those aboard the passenger ships would experience the sensation of being pulled down thanks to the centripetal force created by the rotation of the wheel. In addition to detailing the system, scientists also performed the necessary calculations to determine the structure of the truss and the necessary velocity to simulate Earth normal gravity. They determined that a rotational velocity of 31 meters a second would work for a system that measured about 100 meters in radius, providing the feeling of 1G and making roughly three rotations per minute. Scientists are already at work on the second iteration of this proposal, which includes updated calculations on the rotation, a new truss shape, and the introduction of cables to reinforce the tensile strength of the truss. If humanity ever wishes to venture outside the solar system, we must continue to improve our rocket propulsion technology. As it stands, our technological limitations prohibit us from traveling too far from Earth, let alone the solar system. Over the years, scientists have worked on many theories and prototypes that could replace traditional propulsion methods and help us travel at the speed of light. In 1676, by studying the motion of Jupiter's moon Io, Danish astronomer Ole Romer calculated that light travels at a finite speed. Two years later, building on data gathered by Romer, Dutch mathematician and scientist Christian Huygens became the first person to attempt to determine the actual speed of light. Huygens came up with a figure of 131,000 miles per second, a number that isn't accurate by today's standards. We now know that the speed of light in the vacuum of space is about 186,282 miles per second, but his assessment showcased that light travels at an incredible speed. According to Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity, light travels so fast that, in a vacuum, nothing in the universe is capable of moving faster. Light exhibits both particle-like and wave-like characteristics and can therefore be regarded as both a particle and a wave. This is known as wave-particle duality. If we look at a light as a wave, then there are multiple reasons why certain waves can travel faster than white light in a medium. One such reason is that light travels through a medium, for instance, glass or water droplets. The different frequencies or colors of light travel at different speeds. The most obvious visual example of this occurs in rainbows, which typically have long, faster red wavelengths at the top and short, slower violet wavelengths at the bottom. When light travels through a vacuum, however, the same is not true. All light is a type of electromagnetic wave, and they all have the same speed in a vacuum. This means both radio waves and gamma rays have the same speed. So, the only thing capable of traveling faster than the speed of light is, somewhat paradoxically, light itself though only when not in the vacuum of space. Of note, regardless of the medium, the light will never exceed its maximum speed of 186,282 miles per second. Scientists believe that there is something else to consider when discussing things moving faster than the speed of light. There are parts of the universe that are expanding away from us faster than the speed of light because space-time is expanding. For example, the Hubble Space Telescope recently spotted 12.9 billion-year-old light from a distant star known as Arendelle. But because the universe is expanding at every point, Arendelle is moving away from Earth and has been since its formation, so the galaxy is now 28 billion light-years away from Earth. In this case, space-time is expanding, but the material in space-time is still traveling within the bounds of light speed. Scientists at NASA have also worked on finding new ways to travel in space. Our current understanding of physics states that using propellant to accelerate a craft is the only way to travel in space, but an engineer at NASA may have found an alternative mode of acceleration. NASA engineer believes he could take us to the stars without any propellant at all. Designed by David Burns at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama, the helical engine exploits mass-altering effects known to occur at near-light speed. 
It has been met with skepticism from some quarters, but Burns believes his concept is worth pursuing. To get to grips with the principle of Burns' engine, picture a box on a frictionless surface. Inside that box is a rod, along which a ring can slide. If a spring inside the box gives the ring a push, the ring will slide along the rod one way, while the box will recoil in the other. When the ring reaches the end of the box, it will bounce backward, and the box's recoil direction will switch too. This is action-reaction, also known as Newton's third law of motion, and, in normal circumstances, it restricts the box from wiggling back and forth. But, Burns asks, what if the ring's mass is much greater when it slides in one direction than the other? Then it would give the box a greater kick at one end than the other. Action would exceed reaction, and the box would accelerate forwards. This mass change isn't prohibited by physics. Einstein's theory of special relativity says that objects gain mass as they are driven towards the speed of light, an effect that must be accounted for in particle accelerators. A simplistic implementation of Burns' concept would be to replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator, in which ions are swiftly accelerated to relativistic speed during one stroke and decelerated during the other. But Burns thinks it would make more sense to ditch the box and rod and employ the particle accelerator for the lateral, as well as the circular movement, in which case the accelerator would need to be shaped like a helix. It would also need to be big, some 200 meters long and 12 meters in diameter, and powerful, requiring 165 megawatts of power to generate just one newton of thrust, which is about the same force you use to type on a keyboard. For that reason, the engine would only be able to reach meaningful speeds in the frictionless environment of space. Burns states that the engine itself would be able to get to 99% of the speed of light if you had enough time and power. Propellant-less proposals aren't new. In the late 1970s, Robert Cook, a U.S. inventor, patented an engine that supposedly converted centrifugal force into linear motion. Then, in the early 2000s, British inventor Roger Scheuer proposed the M-Drive, which he claimed could convert trapped microwaves into thrust. Neither concept has been successfully demonstrated, and both are widely assumed to be impossible due to violation of the conservation of momentum, a core physical law. Scientists who previously performed tests on the M-Drive believe the helical engine will probably suffer the same problem. Burns has worked on his design in private without any sponsorship from NASA, and he admits his concept is massively inefficient. However, he says that there is potential to harvest much of the energy that the accelerator loses in heat and radiation. He also suggests ways that momentum could be conserved, such as in the spin of the accelerated ions. Even though failures of the M-Drive and cold fusion are fresh in memory, Burns states that he is prepared to be embarrassed if his design fails. But the possibility of inventing something that could change history is far more exciting. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's shocking Starship launch update. Do you think humanity will travel beyond the solar system in the next 100 years? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.